Hey everybody, I'm taking advantage of a break in the clouds to try to image M100. This spiral galaxy is part of the Virgo cluster and is one of the Messier objects that I haven't yet imaged. So I'm pretty excited to be able to add this one to my Messier collection. I have my Celestron Nexstar 6SE Schmidt Cassegrain telescope sitting outside on a wedge. The wedge turns an otherwise altitude azimuth or alt az mount into an equatorial mount that is capable of tracking objects in the sky and allowing me to take long exposure images. I'm using a ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro camera and an Optolong L Enhance Quad filter. And with this filter, I can take images that are very high gain. Now, sky conditions all winter and into spring have been absolutely terrible. And what I found is that trying to image galaxies this season in particular, I'm not able to make out much detail at all. Now, normally, I've been imaging at unity gain for this camera. That is the sweet spot between being able to capture as much signal at very good depth and minimizing noise. But because of the sky conditions and my Bortle 8th location, I found that by increasing the gain to 360, which is far beyond anything that I've used in the past, I'm actually able to get a significant amount of resolution detail onto some of these galaxies. But this comes at a cost of noise. So to reduce that noise, I'm going to try to take as many frames as I can. Now, the weather is supposed to turn again, and I've only got two or three hours tonight, if that, for imaging. And at three minutes a frame, that leaves me with at most 60 usable frames, give or take a few for uh, satellite trails, airplanes, or just general jostling around of the mount. Um, I'm not going to have all that much to deal with the noise, so we'll see what happens. For now, the telescope is pretty much fully automated. It's running outside. I'm monitoring it using a Windows remote desktop. And all I have to do now is go fold some laundry. Hi, my name is Chris, and welcome to my channel. A typical night of astronomy for me starts with carrying out my assembled Schmidt Cassegrain telescope on a wedge and bolting it down to my shaky pier. Since this is my normal telescope location, my wedge is already polar aligned, so I can right away focus and pick a target. I'm using astrophotography tool with plate solving, which sometimes struggles with the Optolong filter. So tonight, I'm picking my target manually using CPWI. Guiding is turned on and looks good. Tonight, I'm using two filters, the Optolong L-Quad Enhance and the UV Iron Cut filter. Although the forecast was for clear skies, I can tell the transparency could be better. I took some time to fold laundry. My first imaging plan comes to an end as my target sinks behind the house. Before it does, I'm going to take my calibration frames. I take a type of sky flat I call UPPD mat, which I find works remarkably well to filter out light pollution artifacts such as rings. Once that's done, I'm selecting my next target using CPWI because I'm still having problems with plate solving. I could increase my test frame exposure duration, but it's sometimes faster to center targets manually, especially if my alignment is good and the target appears in the camera frame. My telescope nose cam, which is an inexpensive wide-angle webcam, gives me a good view of the telescope slewing to target, 
and shows me obstructions such as trees and clouds. At this point, the telescope is automated and continues to run an imaging plan for the rest of the night while I catch some sleep. So it's been uh, about a week since I was out imaging M100. And if I do say so myself, I think I've also caught a pretty nice image of globular cluster M14, which is an improvement over the one I got a few years ago. Uh, I had just sat down to do some editing on this video to uh, share the outcome with you guys uh, when I noticed that Astro Backyard had just released a video on M100 uh, entitled, uh, I Took a Picture of Another Galaxy. So um, <clears throat> I haven't watched that video yet because I don't want it to affect what I'm recording here. I started posting videos about astrophotography using a Celestron Nexstar 6 FC on a wedge because it's something that, well, if you read enough about astrophotography and telescopes, this is what a lot of people tell you not to do. And those of you who have this telescope, as I did, uh, and are excited about astrophotography, well, when a lot of people tell you not to do something, sometimes you go out and do it anyway. I guess what I'm trying to say is, one of the key points of this channel is uh, for anyone who's trying to image with a telescope and setup that isn't necessarily meant for astrophotography, but you're passionate about the hobby anyway, well, that's what I'm making these videos for. And with that in mind, here's uh, M100 taken from a Bortle 8 sky under some not so fantastic sky conditions and weather conditions with a somewhat standard, mostly visual telescope. So if you have a typical telescope with typical gear in suburban skies, here's what you might expect if you were to try to image M100. FC100 is a barred spiral galaxy, similar in shape to our own Milky Way galaxy. But while our own galaxy is between 100,000 and 120,000 light years across, M100 stretches all the way out to 160,000 light years, making it up to 60% larger than our galaxy, or rather, broader than our galaxy. Because when it comes to mass, we estimate that M100 is roughly between 100 billion and 150 billion solar masses. That means it would contain the equivalent of up to 150 billion stars like our sun. Whereas our own galaxy is estimated to be up to 1.5 trillion solar masses spread between 200 to 400 billion stars, making our own galaxy many times more massive than M100. Now, this galaxy lies 55 million light years away, meaning we're seeing M100 as it looked 55 million years ago, at a time where our own Earth was going through its Paleocene Eocene thermal maximum phase, and some of our earliest tiny primate ancestors were making an appearance. What that means is, aboard Kirk's Enterprise, it would take us over 100,000 years to get to M100. While on the Enterprise D, that same trip would take 28,000 years. I ended up taking three hours worth of uh, images. So 62 three second images using the Optolong filter. I also took about 30 minutes or 11 frames worth of three minute exposures using the UV IR cut filter. Now, the reason I did this is because I've always found that the UV IR cut filter gives me more natural looking stars. I stacked all of the images using Deep Sky Stacker and did my initial processing in a program called Cyril, which allows me to do some of the initial stretching and I think does a really, really good job at removing the background and separating out the stars from the rest of the image. 
This allows me to stretch the stars separately from the galaxies or the nebulas. Otherwise, stars would look far overstretched compared to the rest of the image. I did the rest of my processing in a program called GIMP, which is an open source, free to use alternative to something like Photoshop or PixInsight. Now, it might not have all the bells and whistles of a PixInsight or Photoshop, but GIMP still does an admirable job. And what you can see here is I've uploaded various layers, some of which are the original layers out of Cyril, and some have been processed to varying degrees. Now, I try to keep my processing limited to uh, curve stretches and then combining layers uh, in various levels of opacity to get the most detail out of those curved stretch images. Uh, this is the base layer that I have from the Optimong filter. Uh, this is the image as it was with a bare stretch coming out of Cyril. The next image is that same image, but with all the stars removed. This allows me now to play with the stretches of the galaxy without affecting the stars. And then I have a couple of more stretches that I did, both in Cyril, to varying degrees of intensity. Now, here is the first image uh, using the UV IR cut filter, and you can see the colors are a little bit more natural here, uh, but I also get more light pollution. Now, it would have been interesting to compare three hours using the UV IR cut filter to three hours using the Optilon. I suspect that the Optilon would result in more detail, uh, but unfortunately, I don't have enough clear skies to check that right now. But here's the first image with the UVIR cut filter, and then here is that same image with the stars removed, which means, let me just check, change this from subtract to normal. This is the star removed image, and uh, if I take the star removed image and I subtract it from the version that has stars, let's use the subtraction uh, mode here, uh, this would just give me the uh, UVIR cut stars. Now, next are a series of layers that I use to transform the image. So here is a kind of a base layer with um, some of the redness taken down using the Optilon filter. So you can see quite a bit of detail appearing in the galaxy already. Now, I did soften that up a little bit. Uh, and the core of the galaxy actually showed in the star removed image. So right here is the core of the galaxy. So I exposed it in the galaxy uh, layer instead, just uh, combine those together. And as I step through, you can see various uh, curves uh, and intensities of the image being shifted up and down until I was able to find a happy medium. So just stepping through a few more of these. And this is more or less, I think, the final image that I ended up with right about here. Uh, and then up here, I've got uh, the last two uh, versions of the stars, one Optilong and one UVIR. So here is the UVIR stars and what they look like. And then over here is the Optilong stars. Now, for this particular image, I preferred the Optilong. Uh, but now I'm look as I'm revisiting, uh, sharing this video, I'm not sure if I, I made the right call. I might go back to using the stars from the UV IR image. They're a little bit softer, but I think they look a bit more natural. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Anyway, this is uh, M100 uh, imaged with a Celestron Nexstar 6SE telescope on a wedge using a ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro cooled astrophotography camera over the course of three hours on a not so great evening out of Bordeaux 8 skies. Now I took this image and I ran it through an online uh, tool called astrometry.net. And the cool thing about this tool is uh, amongst other things, it allows you to, or rather it annotates your images for you. So it helps you identify uh, what your image contains. Now here's the version of the image that was annotated by astrometry.net. And we can see right in the middle is M100. Uh, and then surrounding M100, we have a number of other objects, including a bright star called HD107415 uh, and a couple of other galaxies, such as NGC4312. One of the reasons why I wanted to go after M100 
is because I had taken what I thought was a great image of the Virgo cluster using the Rokinon 135mm lens. And that image is right here. I took that image and I had it annotated with astrometry, and here's what it looked like. This is the Virgo cluster, or at least as much of it as well, 135 millimeter lens could capture. And here in the center, you can see the core of what is Barkarian's chain. And then way up here in this corner, near the top, is M100, along with a whole slew of other galaxies that I have yet to add to my Messier list. I have a spot for M100 right over here, and another spot for M88 and M99, which I also tried to image over the last couple of weeks. Now, those galaxies did not turn out quite as well, but I'm going to include them to the end of this video in case you're curious. I had also mentioned that I managed to take an image of M14, which is a really nice looking globular cluster that I'd previously imaged using my Nikon camera when I had a lot less time and it was far lower to the horizon. So this would have been a few years ago. So I'm going to post that one to the end of this video as well. As always, thanks for watching and clear skies.